Four on your right, Lim on your left, number three overall seed. They're both on six cards. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, a lot. Key cards for John here, Corsair of Crufix and Siege Rhino. Yeah. Unsurprisingly, his life gain cards are also his stabilizing creatures. If you're Nathan, don't draw Wild Slashes. Last match, you wanted to draw them. They were great. This match, they're not as good. As the Sands of Citadel is going to start things off, Zamora does draw a copy of Monastery Swift Spear to start things off. He will play a Swift Spear. It looks like he's actually going with Lightning Berserker and pass the turn back. Yeah, by playing Lightning Berserker here, he's actually pushing more damage. Next one, you can go Mountain, Pump Berserker, and Swift Spear. And Lim, you know, you said those stand up Citadel Temple draws. These things are very scary from Rob's on control on the, on the draw. On the play, he can sometimes get away with them, though it'll still cost him. It looks like Zamora has to keep a one-lander here on his mulligan to six. His hand is actually pretty good with a couple copies of Hordling Outburst. There's a Fleece Main line there for John, however. Zamora needs to draw land right now as he has a Lightning Strike. So this would be a good time to do that. Absolutely. Fleece Main Lion, a pretty, uh, you know, I said the key cards are Corsair and Siege Rhino, that's true. Probably your honorable third here goes to Fleece Main Lion, though. It's two mana and positions very well against a lot of the creatures that Tarko Red can bring to the table. It's a Zergo, it's a passing of the turn, no land there. Siege Rhino, the draw here for John. Does he have land number four? He does not. Zamora is fortunate there. Zamora does not have land number two, though. Just picked yeah. up a copy of Atarka's command. So, interesting decision here. He does have two Siege Rhinos, and I was going to say, he should do this. Yes. Because he has two Siege Rhinos, you almost never do this mode against Atarka Red, the no. draw two, lose two. But Nathan, passing the turn on nothing, yeah, draw two, lose two, go for it. Yeah, I think you've got to get those two cards, lose that two life. If you can resolve two Siege Rhinos in a matchup against a Tarka Red, you're almost certainly going to win. Unless you're really far behind when this starts, and John's not. Nathan may have some interest maybe stoking the flames on the Fleece Main Lion while John is tapped out. Get that thing off the table. Now, if you're Nathan, you're hoping he doesn't draw any lands. Well, that and didn't work. Not only is it a land, it's an untapped land. Yes. And the parade of Rhinos begins. This is how this goes sometimes. And Rhino is very, very hard for the Red Deck to be, period. Certainly it's game one, especially when you have no lands. All you can do is pass the turn back over to Lim. And if one Rhino is good, a second one is better. First one's going to come into the red zone. We'll see a second one enter the battlefield here in just a moment. And saying it's uh, been my thing of saying it's never a bad time to draw a Siege Rhino. Sometimes, though, it's a great time to draw a Siege Rhino. And this guy kills so quickly. Two Siege Rhinos, Zamora at 10, and still dies with one land in play. Game one over to John Lim. Yeah, not too tough there for the Obzon Control player. Siege Rhino was a very powerful magic card. Zamora had some mana troubles, and that is that. As Zamora's going to go to the sideboard, we're going to take a look at the sideboard, too, as we should. He's got a Goblin Heel Cutter, two Rabble Masters, four Eidolon of the Great Revel, a Destructive Revelry, two Magmatic Chasms, four Rose and a Scouring Sands. So John's sideboard is moderately prepared for Atarka Red. It's not so hateful that it's running things like Arash and Clerics. That said, what is he going to do in the matchup? All right, he's going to try to get lower to the ground. So cards that matter, the two ultimate price, that card two mana removal spell, the three drown and sorrows, you need a clean way to answer these tokens. And also the two, also, uh, no, never mind, he does not have, yeah, he should have two copies of duress here. I don't believe they're on there, but they are registered in his sideboard. Um, you actually, duress is pretty decent in this matchup uh, because they're, the, Mo the Rotarka Red deck actually runs a fair number of spells, I believe 25 of them here, and it deals you no damage, and just being able, like, the Obzon Control game plan is to trade and remove as much as possible, so at, because Dress is a one-mana spell, you're still going to want it. The things he's going to want to get away from in the matchup um, are, are pretty easy. Thoughtseize tends to be weak here. Two life is just too much to pay for some of the cards you want to get rid of. Um, to a point, I imagine he'll get away of maybe from some of the copies of Obzon Charm, perhaps, uh, Crux of Fate is awfully slow, as is Wingmate Rock. Uh, if you're Zamora in this matchup, you're going to want to bring in the Heel Cutter, the two Rebel Masters. You're on the play, so you might want to consider Eidolon of the Great Revel, but you're certainly going to bring in Rose. So at the very least, you're bringing in seven cards. Uh, in this matchup, Wild Slash is the first one to go, so that's four cards out. I also like boarding out Zergo in this matchup, as Zergo is quickly outclassed by every single creature that John Lim plays. So Fleece Main Lion, Siege Rhino, of course, the Groove Fix, all those cards are better than Zergo is. Now, Foundry Denizen is actually pretty good in this matchup because if you do something like Hordling Outburst and you attack into a Corsair and they trade their Foundry Denizen with your... They trade their Corsair with Foundry Denizen, you're very, very happy about that. Those are the kind of exchanges you want to make, exchanges that Zergo is never capable of making. So those would be the seven cards I board in and board out. Uh, on the play, I actually kind of want Eidolon the Great Revels, so I would probably board out the, uh, the, the Dragon Fodders for the Eidolon the Great Revels. Call today. It's, it's 11 cards. It's quite a few. Um, but when you're on the play, things certainly do change in the matchup. Now, the Idol of the Great Revel, Revel part is interesting because John's deck does actually, between main and board, have two copies of 
uh, Dromoka's command. Yeah, I don't Scott, care. Not, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm inclined to agree because if things are going according to plan for a Targa Red, John shouldn't be able to fight down your creatures anyway because he shouldn't really have creatures in play. Yeah, uh, if he, I mean, Dromoka's command, it, it's going to be good against you no matter what, so it doesn't really matter all, to me all that much. And, you know, if he draws it and he kills Nylon on a creature, I mean, good beats are probably not winning that game anyway. Uh, I mean, I'm not terribly scared of that card. Much more afraid of Drown and Sorrow and Duress. Not to say that Dromoka's command isn't good against the deck because it's fantastic. It needs a burn spell. It can kill Eidolon on a Great Revel or a creature, but it's not going to stop me from boarding an Eidolon with any luck, Eidolon gets to deal four points of damage. Mm -hmm. That's the big plan. If it deals more than that, then the card has been insane for you over the course of the game. Yeah, if you can get a conversion ratio of, yeah, six points for two two mana, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even want six. I, if I get four, if I get to play, if I get to play Eidolon, you play like a temple, I attack you for two, and then you drown and start with my Eidolon. That's two mana for four damage. That's a flame rift. Patrick would be proud of that. I'd be, I'd be happy with that, too. Right, and I think that's one of the things you mentioned when you said, you know, we were talking before that the Ob's on control deck can get burned out very easily. It's why they these all removal hands can be very dangerous for them. He really needs those cards like Corsair and and especially Siege Rhinos that he's not just gaining life, but he's winning. We will talk very quickly about the Season 2 schedule here on the Open Series as it is just about to wrap up. We're obviously here in Dallas. We've got Worcester next weekend, a Legacy Open. We haven't had one of those for a while, so I know there will be a lot of interested viewers there. A lot of the players are going to come out for that. I know Joe Lissette's traveling that way, and then the other players on the top of the leaderboard, that's Kevin Jones, Ross Merriam, Danny Jessup, and Gerard Fabiano. That's right in their wheelhouse, so they'll all be there. And then, of course, our Season 2 Invitational, Modern Open Series, Modern and Standard Invitational. Uh, me, you, and Patrick Sullivan will be bringing the coverage for that. And don't forget about the Polar Punch playmat. Last time you can get it is next weekend in Worcester. It's free limited edition, no strings attached. You come, you sign up for the main event, you get this awesome playmat. Yeah, so that's free limited edition playmat. You said all Open Series competitors was given away this week and will be given away next week. We'll have a Season 3 playoff for you guys debuting at the Season 2 Invitational. The Season 3 kicks off there with that main event, that main modern 20K. So look forward to that. Don't want to give any hints away on what that's going to be, but trust me, if you like this one, you're going to like that one too, as we like to have these parody play mats. You're ready for game number two here. Uh, Nathan, a little strategic advice, draw more than two, draw more than one land. Yeah. That's my professional advice. And especially on six cards, the hand that Nathan kept was pretty good. Yeah, it was good. I mean, if he draws running lands, he gets to play some magic. Even if he draws one land, he actually gets to play some magic. If he draws one land, he gets to play some magic. If he can draw running lands, he's probably a favorite. Yeah. He's going to take a mulligan here. One thing, I, uh, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't like mulliganing, but at the same time, when you were playing the Atarka Red deck, you can't be afraid to mulligan with the deck either. The deck actually mulligans much better than I think people expect. A lot of Red decks have mulligan poorly, but the, the power level of this deck is actually pretty high, so you don't be afraid to go on six cards with this deck. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with whether or not you're a more of a Red deck wins or a burn style deck. So burn decks are very much on this each card is worth X points of damage, so every time I go down a card, I'm losing damage. Those decks don't like to mulligan, but Atarka Red is much more of a red deck win style deck. It gets ahead on the board very early and pushes those creatures for a lot of damage, so being down one card, as long as you have your board presence, shouldn't matter as much. Yeah. Burn decks, they can't mulligan very well. They don't like it. You have to keep some pretty bad hands with burn decks, and hopefully they, you know, they kind of go according to plan. You cough up the right cards in the right order. See if Nathan gets to keep on six. I think he said keep before he even drew his last card. He's on the play. So this is the tough one for John. He's going to start with a Wooded Foothills and a passing of the turn. Sansep Citadel and a pass over to Zamora. Zamora is going to sacrifice that Foothills. Go down to 19. We'll see if it's going to be a mountain or the forest. It's the dangerous part here, those, those tap lands from John, this is the, the first two turns is the window where he can really take a beating. That said, if Nathan's first play is fetch land into forest, I'm not as worried if I'm on John's side of things. Fetch land into forest certainly means one thing. There is no Eidolon in hand, and I imagine no Eidolon in deck if he's searching for forest on turn one. Take a draw, lightning strike, pass the turn back. That's not good news. No, he needs those creatures there. John does appear to have a turn three Corsair, as well as a Dromoka's Command and a Drown in Sorrow. And Nathan's hand is super reactive at this point. He just drew a copy of Atarka's Command. He has no creature in hand, no Whirling Outburst, no Dragon Fodder, no nothing. He's got Roast and Stoke the Flames and all that jazz. Not to say those are bad cards, but... When the first creature of the game is a Corsair, that's not good for Nathan. And then you look at it, reveals Siege Rhino. These are the two key cards for John. He has them both. Now, oddly enough, he's... Whirling Outburst may have been the best draw there. 
Yeah. Yeah, pass the turn back. But actually, if you take a look at John's hand, John's hand is actually fantastic. He gets to play the temple here off the courser. Means he gets the scry. Take a look. Oh, boy. Two rhinos. This is getting hard. This is so. So what you're telling me is that play this turn is going to be a drown in sorrow. And then yep. I, we know what the next two plays are. They're both the same card. Yeah, we do. We, we do. He can play another courser if he wants. This is bio. Oh my! Is it bioblight too? Yeah, this. Uh, so he's not even playing the drown and sorrow yet. He's gonna go with bioblight. This game might be over. I mean, you're not playing the the drown and sorrow because because who wants to scry when you, when you have gifts like this coming That's up? That's true. Jeez. So my job and your job at the booth is to say how well, okay, well Nathan can draw this string of cards to be able to win and Pack you get all these in. great things. I this, don't. This Jeez. game is this game is over. It's, it's unfortunate because I'm a fan of Atark Red and I'm a fan of Nathan Zamora. John's draw this game is truly incredible. It is truly incredible. Nathan gets some Atark that's Drown, man. Corsair, Corsair, Rhino, Rhino. Yeah. That's, that is what you want yeah. in this matchup. If you could stack your deck, this is what you'd want to have. There's a roast to kill the Rhino. That's untrue. I would put a duress in it. Stop. I'm not listening to you. If you could stack your deck, this is what you would want. Even if you have a Dromokas command. That's pretty good. John might end this game at 30. Yeah, he hasn't really taken too much damage. No. And he might end the game with Drown and Sorrow in his hand. There's a Rhino. Nathan down to seven. Six points damage on John's side. Yep. Yeah, there's a Dragon Fodder. Yep. That's yeah, just... And John, John's draw, his draw just came together perfect this game. And you know what? That happens. It's all part of it. There's nothing you can do. Shrug your shoulders. Say, I've had a great run, which Zamora has had. There's Stoke the Flames. I think Zamora said I'm targeting myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know his own terms. I can respect that. Zamora. I can't I can respect that. Zamora down, down to three off yep. that Dramoka's command. Yep. Finish it off. Right. John Lim is going to win this game and match here with Nathan Zamora. Ob's on control. is moving on to the finals. Takes down of Tarka Red in pretty simple fashion. Zamora's hands did not come together all that well, and John's hand, certainly that game did. He's on to the finals. Snaden Zamora, what a top eight. Wins round one in 14 minutes, loses round two in 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. He didn't, didn't stay all that long on the camera, which means we get the opportunity to move on to our next matchup.